Good morning, everyone. My name is Nicola O'Reardon, and I work for Fulcher Ireland in the Accommodation Development Team. I'd like to welcome you all to this morning's webinar on driving domestic sales for accommodation businesses, and to thank you for taking the time to join us. Fulcher Ireland's top priority is supporting Ireland's tourism and hospitality businesses to survive and recover from the catastrophic impact of COVID-19. The accommodation sector is crucial. It's a valued part of our national tourism industry, and therefore we are committed to supporting you to successfully recover. This webinar is specifically designed for small tourist accommodation businesses who wish to adopt their current offering to further appeal to the domestic tourism market and to drive sales in 2021 and also in the shoulder season and in early 2022. It was developed based on conversations we've had with the industry in recent weeks and months, and I hope it will inspire you when you're looking at new ways to do business when you open. I'd like to kick off by introducing our facilitator for today. I'm delighted to welcome Julie O'Brien, who many of you may already know. Julie has 25 years experience in the tourism and hospitality industry, in particular working with accommodation businesses around experience creation and commercial strategies. So without further ado, Julie, I'll hand over to you and I'll jump back in when you're finished for the questions and answers. Oh, thank you so much, Nicola. So as Nicola said, my name is Julie O'Brien and I am really delighted to be here with you all today until about quarter past 11. And before we kick off at all, I would like to draw your attention to the wonderful support uh, that Falter Ireland has created on the Business Supports Hub. So you'll be getting, uh, you know, you'll be able to look at these slides after the session and I would ask you to pop that link that's on this slide into your browser so you can take a good look at those supports hub. And of course, there is uh, support information here uh, for all different kinds of accommodation providers, including B&Bs, caravans and camping, hotels and guest houses, hostels and self-catering, all of which are represented on the session today and you are very welcome. So let me take you quickly through the content we're going to cover today. And as you see, there's an awful lot here. We're going to kick off looking at the key to success of achieving 2021 domestic bookings. We'll move on then to number two, latest insights into the domestic customer and markets. Number three, know how to play to your strengths and position your accommodation business to suit the needs of the domestic visitor. Number four, pitching and selling offers from the customer's perspective. We'll move on then to looking at emphasizing value and the management of pricing for customers. Moving on to topic six, we look at tips to drive 2021 sales. After that, we look at tips for winning uh, low and shoulder uh, season business 2021 and 2022. So specifically revenue generation uh, that will drive revenue for low and shoulder season 2021 and 2022. And finally, we will wrap up uh, looking at the asks post this session. So we have very specific asks for you before we take questions at the end. So what will happen as a result of attending today's session? What will the outcome be? Well, you'll get an overview of the diverse types of the Domestic, custom, domestic customers that are priority targets for 2021. And you'll be able to analyze the requirements of these diverse customer types. You will know how to play to your strengths and to position your accommodation business to suit the needs of the domestic visitor. You will learn how to untap other potential guests by considering small changes that you can make to your business to make it more attractive to those who are looking for really specific product types. For example, the kind of customer who's looking for a friend, a pet friendly accommodation provider, or the kind of customer who's interested in places that can support golfers, adventurers, foodies. And finally, we will be giving you insights into how to optimize increased sales with top tips to market and sell uh, your accommodation uh, business in order to reach new and existing business. So on that front, let's kick off now with our very first topic, the key to success of achieving 2021 domestic bookings. So what is our pathway for success here? Well, firstly, it is most important that you as an accommodation provider know which customers are a match for your offering, for your accommodation, and that you specifically know how to address those customers' interests, needs, and budgets. It is about enabling the customer to quickly identify that your offering is a match for their needs. And that's about 
providing really clear offline and online communications that are also mindful of uh, the Fall to Ireland consumer insights uh, that uh, you know show us what our customers want and we'll be touching on those later. It's about ensuring that your inventory, your, your rooms, your site, your pitches are open and available for sale across all sales channels. It's about being proactive about achieving sales. This year, it is also, of course, about reassuring the customer so that COVID-19 safety charts are all important. And it is very much about making your accommodation offering sing, showing the customer all of the advantages of staying with you. So in that vein, we're going to adopt a really proactive approach, can-do approach to, to, through today's session, which we hope you will carry into your businesses afterwards, knowing that input equals outcome. In other words, you put a well-measured input, a well-measured strategy in place, and you will achieve the outcome of winning customers and uh, winning revenue generation for 2021. So we want you to place your energy into being positive and proactive, achieving real results and maximizing revenue generation for this year. So really successful tourism businesses and destinations, they adopt this approach. It is about taking individual responsibility. So I take responsibility. I am proactive about achieving results for my business. It is also really helpful to take collective responsibility. So within our communities, I am individually responsible and I am collectively responsible as the collection of tourism businesses and as the community as a whole, we make our destination sing so that customers want to travel and engage and we inspire them in that way. And finally, once we know to take individual and collective responsibility, it is about knowing how to leaning, lean on and benefit from resources. Uh, so I suppose we can maximize our revenue generation opportunities. And today is an example of a resource that's been provided for you by Falta Ireland. So let's maximize the outcomes in that regard, because what we're looking for, of course, is stepwise growth and success, uh, maximizing revenue generation for your business in 2021 in light, as Nicola said earlier, of um, you know the uncharted territory we're now living in through COVID-19 over the past year. So moving on now, let's take a look at uh, the latest insights into the domestic customer and target markets for 2021. And we're going to touch on Falta Ireland's consumer insights here. And I need to draw your attention to a couple of points. Um, some of you may have attended this uh, really insightful session. I attended myself. I took a lot of notes back in March 2021. For those of you who did not, I would suggest that you uh, visit this link after today's session uh, where the, uh, the, the session was recorded and that you take really detailed notes because there are brilliant insights there uh, that show us how we should be communicating with our customers as supposed to win their favour and to win their bookings in 2021. So the session was presented by Jill de Acevedo, who's Head of Consumer Planning and Insights for Fall to Ireland. And I'm calling out one comment that uh, was made during the session by Jill, and it's this. Consumers are in a different place to where they were last year. It is all about tailoring product, price and messaging so you are ready to maximize opportunities and really that is the lead that we are taking in this session so bear that in mind a really important statement there our task on the back of this is to ensure that your accommodation offering inspires and motivates customers to engage so what to watch out for when you go back and take a look at the consumer insights recording for me, I will be listening keenly to the following points. First of all, what are the key target customer groups? And the session goes into great detail in explaining those. And they include groups like family, the plus 45's age group, pre-family, young adults. So I would like you to carefully listen to this and to identify which groups, which segments are a match for your accommodation offering. Listen to the session and in your mind, drill down even deeper because what you need to do within the, your chosen groups is to also address the needs, interests and budgets of the target customers you've chosen. When you listen to the consumer insights, also be aware of the opportunity. For example, it was really explained that in 2020, the short break stay became a big phenomenon, and that's likely to remain in 2021. 
the four nights day was a big phenomenon in 2020 and we're likely to see that repeat in 2021 and what was really interesting is that customers did multiple repeat four nights days across diverse destinations in Ireland so we want you to get a, a share of that and of course, the key markets for 2021 are the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland markets. So we need to be really aware of these insights so we can maximize opportunities there. So I'm asking you to take the link that I just showed you on this slide and pop that into your browser so that you take detailed look at these consumer insights. And just to make you aware, at the end of the session, uh, we've included some summary slides uh, that summarize some key insights from the session too, and we'll be asking you to take a look at those in your own time. So keeping in mind Falta Ireland's consumer insights, let's take a look now at target markets. So when I'm building out strategies for accommodation provider businesses and for destinations, I never like to think of markets in one big chunk because it kind of feels unsurmountable then. What I like to do is break my market down. So we know, of course, that the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland markets are key for this year. So let's not look at it as one giant piece. Let's break it into smaller pieces. So I would begin by looking at my doorstep markets. What's available to me within, you know, a certain radius, uh, maybe within 50 or 100 kilometers? I leave it with you to decide uh, what your do doorstep radius is and what are the kind of things I can sell to my doorstep market. I would then look beyond that to the neighboring Republic of Ireland county. So where am I based? Where are the counties that touch where I am based and how can I reach out to them with opportunities? What can I sell to them? I would then think further to the distant Republic of Ireland counties, those ones that are further away from where I'm based. And of course, the further away where my customer is based, if they come and stay with me, the longer they're likely to need that over, overnight stay. So I might get a longer duration in the break, which is interesting. And I would move beyond that again into the Northern Ireland counties. How can I reach the customers there so that they engage with my accommodation provider offering? So if it were me, I would be taking the map of Ireland and figuring out my markets in this way. So literally, where is my doorstep? What can I sell here? Which are the neighboring either, you know, Republic of Ireland or Northern Ireland counties? Which are the distant Republic of Ireland counties? And which are the distant Northern Ireland ones for me? And I'd be mapping out my communications in this way, creating diverse opportunities and diverse revenue streams for my accommodation provider business. So it is all about understanding the opportunity and maximizing the opportunity and not making things insurmountable, but uh, creating stepwise strategies that lead us to revenue generation. And that very nicely now leads us to our very first poll. Um, and uh, at this po poll, you're going to be asked to answer this question. Have you actively engaged in winning domestic customers in the past two years? And very simply, you need to answer yes or no there. And I'm going to call on my colleague Nicola from Falta Ireland now, um, you know, to give us the outcome of those uh, that poll. And maybe also there've been questions this far. Yes, Julie, we've just one interesting insight that's been put into the chat, and it was actually raised with us before. Someone has commented that they used to have a lot of Irish people staying with them in the past and they'd really like to learn today how to win them back and actually never to lose them again in the future. Yeah, and Nicola, that's yeah, that's something I hear a lot in my work with uh, Falta Ireland. Um, uh, people who felt that they had that domestic customer in the in the past, and maybe they've lost them. So I'll bring you back to that equation that I said earlier: input equals outcome. So input, the input is that you create a strategy that wins you that domestic market customer. The outcome is that you win them. So I would say this: this year we need to uh, make sure that our domestic customers fall back in love uh, you know with our accommodation offering but more importantly even the destinations where our accommodation uh, offerings are based so it is very much about making uh, the experiences and the destination sing and we'll be giving you some strategies around that today uh, the, it has never there's never been a quieter time to quote communicate with that domestic market so now is the time to win them and to keep them not just for 2021 but well into the future so let's look at that as we move through today's session 
Is that okay, Nicola? Does that answer your... No, that, I, I think that, that addresses it. And of course, all the content that we'll be talking through today will build on what you've just said there. That, yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. Do we have the answer to the poll, I wonder, Nicola? We do indeed. So in terms of the group that's with us today, 64% are telling us that they've actively engaged in winning domestic customers in the past two years. And then that means that 36% haven't or haven't as yet. Or haven't as yet. Okay, so that's something to think about. So a good one third haven't specifically targeted uh, the domestic customer and about two thirds have. And of course, we're going to think about maximizing that opportunity, increasing that share of the domestic market for 2021. Okay, if everything's okay there, Nicola, I'll move forward then into the next topics. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so let's look now at knowing how to play to your strengths and position your accommodation business to suit the needs of the domestic visitor. Okay, so this is really important. We never sell tourism products in a vague way. It has to be a very specific way. So rather than selling your accommodation to all domestic tourists, it is really, really recommended that you have a, a, a targeted approach. So. To do that, we first of all identify the customers that are a match for your accommodation offering. Like we said there earlier, and you'll find out about more customer segments when you look at Walter Ireland's Consumer Insights, are you a match for families, adults, say in the plus 45 age group, young adults, pre-family? So really understanding what your match is. Then beyond the customer segment, number two, identifying the specific interests, needs and nuances that your accommodation can cater for within your chosen target groups. For example, could you specifically cater for golfers, anglers, walkers, adventurers, pet owners? And to achieve the above, to do the above work really forensically so you get a really good outcome, the accommodation owner should objectively review its business as follows. You should really be clear on the accommodation product offering. Number two, you should be clear on the facilities offered by your accommodation. Number three, really important, be crystal clear on the location. And number four, really clear on nearby amenities. So you're starting to think about really addressing consumers' needs. So let's flesh that out a little bit more now. And um, the planning process for really, uh, you know, planning your communication so that you can meet the needs of your target customers and their interests, needs, budgets and nuances. So let's begin now for to take your accommodation product. I would urge you maybe after this session to take some pen and paper or sit yourself in front of your computer and begin by bullet pointing at least at least five. Maybe you'll end up at 10, but start with at least five strong advantages offered by your accommodation. By doing this, you'll start to pull out real clarity in your communications. So maybe you'll come up with something like this. And depending on your accommodation provider uh, category, of course, the outcome may be different. But are you large, comfortable, recently, uh, have you got large, comfortable, recently refurbished bedrooms? Are you a farm style accommodation serving seasonal produce and local arts and foods? Are you maybe an accommodation provider that offer, you know, with a bilingual Irish and English speaking family? Do you have great views, maybe coastal or rural views? Are you really thoughtful? Do you have lovely welcoming touches like tea and homemade drizzle cake on arrival? Are you an accommodation provider that offers clear value? So call out those advantages as they specifically relate to your accommodation product. Number two, be very clear on the facilities offered by your, your accommodation. And again, I would ask you to bullet point those. So depending on your accommodation, you may have brilliant storage facilities. And maybe those facilities do golfers or anglers or adventurers or walkers. You may have pet friendly facilities, you know, a fenced area where a pet can run free. Wouldn't a pet owner be thrilled with that? You may have playground facilities, maybe with the swings and slides to keep children occupied. A games room, maybe a snooker table, table that would get adults and teenagers occupied. You might have leisure facilities, maybe something like mini golf. And when you're working through this, I want you to think about your, your, you in your accommodation offering and anything specifically about you and your team that needs to be communicated. Like maybe you're an accommodation provider that prizes artisan food and you're brilliant at sharing cookery tips and recipes and insight and maybe the provenance of local food with your customers. So that would need to be called out. 
Maybe you're an accommodation provider that celebrates the Irish language or a fluent language speaker yourself, and you would like to attract customers who maybe have really good Irish and they get a full immersion um, into this Irish language experience. Or maybe also you'd like to attract, you know, the customer that maybe doesn't feel so confident with Irish, but they'd like to learn a few words. And how would you address those needs so that you would allow them, you know, to increase in confidence and feel welcome? Maybe you're an accommodation provider that has special talents. Maybe you're amazing at music. You're a, a terrific Chano singer. You're brilliant at activities. You're brilliant at sports. Maybe you're brilliant at fishing, at angling or golfing. So attracting customers were a match for your natural talents. Or maybe you're an accommodation provider that understands, really understands family needs, you know, addressing those needs, like we said, with maybe swings or slides or little breakfast offer options that really match children. So being aware of who you are and what you can bring to the table is really important. So you can pull out the unique identity for yourself as an accommodation provider and give customers compelling reasons to engage. Moving on to step three, I would urge you to take a look at your location. Wherever you are, is it rural, a village, a town, a city? It could be an island, a smaller island. Note minimum five selling points about your location. For example, incredible views, tranquility, maybe something about the people. Maybe you're within story, sto strolling distance of a, of a nearby village, a town or a city. So call those out again in bullet point format so they become clear to you. And finally, take a look at nearby amenities. What do you have nearby? Do you have great shopping? Do you have amazing farmers markets, lovely little curiosity stores that you think customers might be interested in? Do you have local adventure providers, golf, fishing, kayaking, surfing, hiking, uh, hi hiking uh, canyoning, I was thinking there, that would attract particular customers to your destination and to your accommodation provider business? Do you have local visitor attractions, maybe iconic ones and less well known? And I need to give a big shout out to Monaghan here because I see them doing great uh, posts on social media about the local tin church there and they really come across really, really well. Uh, great local beaches, you have great food experiences. Are you convenient to local culture, cultural attractions? Do you have local services that match the needs? Think of that word match in big capital letters in your head of your specific target customers. For example, for golfers, do you have transfer contacts that would bring them, you know, to neighboring golf courses? Do you have information on those courses? Do you have information on quality golf pros and golf shops? For pet owners, do you have very practical things like vet contact numbers, you know, ready in case of emergencies? So when we're presenting the commu communications for your accommodation provider, it is very much about playing to your strengths, matching, communicating to the customer sees there's a match and playing to your strengths. In that regard, let's take a deeper look now at anglers. Let's just say I'm an accommodation provider and anglers are brilliant for, for me and I've identified that. What are the things I would need to call out there? Well, first of all, anglers will be delighted to know that I have brilliant storage facilities, that I offer a suitable, secure facility with shells, hangers and wall hooks uh, used for the drying and storage of fishing clothing and boots and all angler equipment, tackle and on we go. That the facility is heated, well ventilated and aerated. Maybe I've got a separate fridge freezer for the storage of fishing bait and any fish caught. And maybe I have, you know, space for a storage box and for rods. So practically, that would tick the box of the angler. Now, in terms of their full food and beverage needs, maybe I am an accommodation provider that's delighted to offer early full breakfast so the anglers can get out, you know, enjoying activities for the day. Maybe I could provide, you know, really lovely packed lunches and picnics and I can charge these as an additional cost. But what I've done is identified the need and I've addressed it with this solution. So let's look at managing angler specific needs now. So really drilling down, really showing that you're a match and living up to that in terms of the service. Ensuring that members of the team can provide up-to-date information on local angling conditions and methods, weather forecasts, etc. Advising guests where to get details regarding angling regulations and permits for your area. As part of the booking process, providing details on local gillies, tuitions, boat hire, tackle, offering directions to lakes and rivers in the area, offering these verbally, you know, and maybe having something, you know, that the angler can download that provides them, you know, with a, a written record as well. Can your accommodation provider, if the angler is a target uh, customer segment for you, provide taxi and other transfer details if needed so that they can reach the lakes and rivers that they need to arrive at? 
And could you request that your angler guests provide information on their catches and feedback uh, and on their angling experiences in catch records and in, um, you know, in guest review sites so that really your reputation for knowing to look after these customer types becomes really well known? So we've taken a deeper look at anglers here, but in your own time, I'm gonna ask you to go through similar kind of work that we've done for other specific target customer segments. So um, uh, in your own time, you might look at the information we've provided here for golfers, for pet owners. And the next slide, guys, is gonna make you smile because take a look at this. I absolutely love this communication. So this is the market, the Morgan Hotel in Dublin, and they have uh, uh, created communications that show that they are a dog-friendly hotel attracting that pet owner for 2021. The visual imagery says it all. It's just so inviting. The communication is so succinct and clear, and there are lovely touches and very simple for the accommodation provider to create. Look, our dog friendly room includes very simple things like a food and water bowl, a dog bed. They even have a doggy dining menu available from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and you can click to get that menu. And they have house rules for dog. Uh, and look at the gorgeous communications there, house rules, break them and you'll end up in the dog house. So giving the pet owner instructions about how they expect them and their animal to behave in the hotel, but done in a really, really fun way. So that's an example of an accommodation accommodation provider really speaking to the needs. They've done their homework and they're speaking to the needs of their target customer segment through these communications. And I would urge you to take their lead when you think about this after today's session, because this is brilliantly done. Uh, maybe going on to other different kind of customer types, you're a food uh, you, you're, you're a match for food lovers. And again, if you are, I would ask you to take a look at this content in your own time later. Maybe you're a match for adventure seekers. And again, the drill down has, you know, the, the thought process for this has been worked out for you here. So I would urge you to take a look at this. Maybe you're a farmhouse experience. And again, the same work done. Maybe you're a Gweltocht experience and it's great demand uh, for Gweltocht experiences this year and engaging with the Irish language. So if you fit into that category, I would urge you to take a look at this slide here. So you can see the process here that we are fully aware of our strengths as an accommodation provider. We are very clear on the customer segment and their specifically interest, their specific interest needs and nuances that are a match for our offering. And then, like we saw with the Morgan Hotel there, it is about the communication process. Once you have objectively assessed which customer segments and their associated interests and needs provide the best match for your accommodation, you need to make sure that that's reflected in your communications because it came across very clearly in the Fall to Ireland Consumer Insights that the customers do not want to spend days doing research. They want to read communications and immediately see that they are a match. So that is uh, an ask that we need to respond to for 2021. And how do we present our communications? We do that via well-crafted text and well-chosen imagery. For some of you, it may be short, compelling video content as well. And so we plan those communications verbal. Somebody calls us, are we ready to answer, to make sure that uh, that customer can see we are a match for their needs so we can proceed quickly to booking in written, in our offline and online content. And visually, we show the customer we're a match, just like the Morgan show the pet owner customer that they are a match for their needs on those previous slides. So the aim is that the customer quickly and easily sees that your accommodation meets their requirements. And then when the customer shows up, your job is to delight your target customer. And in Ireland, we're very good at this during their stay by meeting their requirements. And of course, when you do that, what you do is you generate positive word of mouth and repeat customers for the future. And that's when the whole process get, gets easy. You get repeat business, positive word of mouth, and the whole thing rolls over. So we want you to think about, you know, delighting the customer at the point of the experience when they show up and stay with you, but also winning the customer at the point of consideration, at the point of purchase, when they're trying to figure out where they should go. So the two different processes need to be addressed. Moving on now, we're gonna take a look at pitching and selling offers from the customer's perspective. So I hope you're all taking notes wherever you are sitting uh, out there listening in today. And we're gonna take a 
a key look at this now as the key reasons to choose your accommodation offering. So this is a, an important thing to say because Nicola highlighted earlier that I've worked in tourism and hospitality for more than 25 years and for a large chunk of that career I've worked with accommodation uh, provider businesses and when I started a lot of you will know this um, it was about the product it was about selling the bed you bought a bed you went to the destination you might have taken a quick photo and all you went uh, off you went but Travel has transformed. It is no longer. Uh, it is no longer about that. It is no longer about selling the space, the site, the bed. It is no longer about the the pro the product in that way. It is literally all about the experience within the destination context. So, as accommodation providers, you need to understand that, and you need to know how to play your role in making your destination sing. So it is about your com accommodation being well rooted within its community. And again, you'll hear that coming across very strongly on Falta Ireland's Consumer Insights. It's about your accommodation provider, you know, being presented by, you know, caring people rooted in the community, a place that's known for its welcome. It is also about providing reassurance, and of course, in the world we're living in, that customers know that they don't need to feel anxious. You've got them covered. Maybe, you know, hopefully you've got the COVID-19 safety charter and they can just get on with making new memories because you know how to look after them. And the COVID-19 safety charter tells them that they don't need to be anxious, that you've got them covered, as we said earlier. And the human touch, this is really important. Uh, of course, this was important prior to COVID-19. It is elevated in light of COVID-19. It is all about people. It is all about that smile and that kind human face and the ability to meet customers' needs. So through your accommodation provider uh, business, I would like you to think about that local insight, how you can make your community and your destination sing and how you can really ensure that you're playing a key role in, um, in creating new memories for people and that all important human touch being really important. So at the point of the pitch, it is very much at the, the, the role of, the, of your business as accommodation providers to know the customer segments that are a match, like we said earlier, for your needs, uh, 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 for your business, and also their specific interest, needs, and budget. So think about that logically. You are the accommodation provider there is a customer who's established you are a match for their needs. Let's just say we're the angler. You've communicated this. They can see it really clearly. Your image in your text is making that clear. And now what we have is a meeting of minds. We've got a match. OK, so the particular customer who has matched with you because your accommodation provider business is a match for their needs is now also looking for your insight on why they should come to your uh, stay with you and explore your destination. So bearing in mind that our key market for 2021 is the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland market and the holiday market leisure tourism is the key opportunity for 2021. You need to have it up there in bright lights in your heads and among your teams that leisure travel is all about showing the customers the reasons to come. So what can be seen and done and experienced? What kind of memories can be created in your area? So how do we make sure that the accommodation provider is really ingrained in the local community and really making the destination offering sing? Well, they're simple. And of course, when we do this, we encourage customers to engage, to book, to stay. And what we really want is for them to stay longer, that we've made them aware of the full opportunity here, that we've inspired them to come and stay and stay longer. And it's our role as tourism business providers to provide that narrative. So the devices that we can use to encourage that are referrals, partnerships, itineraries and when I say itineraries I really mean recommendations showing the customer what can be done over multiple days so the customer maybe not is not from your area maybe they come from a far-flung county and they might not even understand the geography of your area so being able to come up with little little itineraries that show them what can be done over a day or multiple days can be really useful and of course it is all about also celebrating what your accommodation uh, can offer so let's take a look now at recommendations based on local insight and offline and online referrals. 
So in your destinations, you may partner with, you know, maybe activity providers or um, visitor attractions, and you may refer these to your customers offline and online because they are a match for the kind of customers that you attract to your accommodation business. And I would just like to show you very briefly an example of an offline referral. And I really do need uh, to put this one in bright lights because a number of years ago, while working with Falta Ireland, I was in the southwest of Ireland and there were a number of tourism businesses there, some of them very large. And the one that got a huge round of applause in this, in this room was a B&B &B owner with four bedrooms. And what was this lady very simply doing? She was very proud of her area. Her family had lived in the area for a number of generations. And in all of her kindness, when somebody sent an email asking for a date, she would reply something back like, thank you so much for your inquiry for the 20th of July, or it could be the 20th of November by whatever number of nights. And she would highlight, you know, what was ever relevant to that, the kind of room she was offering to the customer and what was included in the room and of course the price. And then she went a step further, and this is the winning step. She would put in a note to say, you know, I am from this area from, you know, we're a family that have lived in this area for a really long time. And she explained just very succinctly why she loved it. And she went on to say, and I've attached, you know, maybe five or 10 things that we love to do as people who live in the local area and everyone in that room. Uh, and there were some very experienced, you know, uh, directors of companies and everything were just charmed by this lady because the outcome of this uh, email is that the person requesting the booking, maybe initially they asked for one or two nights. And very often she was finding that they were emailing back to extend their stay because her recommendations were considered to have such high value. Now, you just think of that logically. There is nothing like the value of that referral that comes from a lady like that from the local area with such immense integrity. There is no marketing brochure that can beat that. So I would urge you to think about the power as accommodation providers, all the diverse accommodation providers we have joining the session today, the power you have in that regard to really place yourself within your local community, creating opportunities both for your your business and the wider community and it was lovely to see that lady celebrated today so maybe we could take some inspiration uh, from, um, from, from that after today's session. Apart from referrals I'm going to urge you to think about partnerships so you are the accommodation providers and maybe you could think about partners you could pair with locally uh, that would be mutual benefic mutually beneficial partnerships. For example, I'm aware of a cookery school and an accommodation provider that I've paired. So the cookery do, school do lovely you know, cookery sessions and they are recommending the accommodation provider to the customers who book in there. So it's a lovely partnership. So you could think about partnerships in your local communities and destinations that would uh, create mutually benefit uh, opportunities in that regard. I would like you to also think beyond that. Think about associations and societies that maybe are linked with your target customers and their particular interest needs and nuances. Let's just say you've identified the angler as a particular customer that's a match for your business. Well, you could reach out to associations and societies uh, you know, across Ireland that are a fit for anglers to make them aware that you're a match there and win business through by being proactive. And I'm going to introduce you to a concept now that we're seeing really rising in light of 2021, and that's local partners coming together uh, to create what they're calling partnership pricing or very nicely neighbourhood pricing. So here's an example from the Grand Hotel um, in North Dublin in Malahide. And you can see here, I'll ask you to take a look at it later. There's a link uh, for the offer uh, on the slide here. But you can see that they've paired with the local partners in Malahide. And all you've got to do is show your room key and you get a specific discount. So in this case, 20% uh, to enter Malahide Castle, Casino Railway Museum and Newbridge House. So again, this is a way of creating an offer as an accommodation provider. Uh, you know, showing the customer uh, what can be done within a destination and providing a very simple incentive. All you have to do is show your room key to get it, which enables, of course, the visitor attraction to measure the amount of bookings that they've gotten through this referral partnership. So I'd urge you to maybe think about that because we're seeing that as a rising initiative this time of, uh, you know, for 2021 and really driving and maximizing those bookings. So something to consider.
So here we go, guys. We're moving nicely through the content and we've come up here now to poll number two. So the second question that you're being asked is, are you proactive about creating bookings and revenue generation for your business via partnerships? And I'm hoping right now that my colleague Nicola from Falta Ireland is going to pop in to help me. So and those questions will be showing on your screen. I will indeed, Julie, when we have the results. But just firstly, we've had a couple of requests for the slides. So both okay. the slides and the recording of the webinar will be shared with, with everybody afterwards. It sounds like you're giving such great information, Julie, that they can't keep up in, in terms of note taking and ideas and that. So that, that's a really positive feedback on, on the event so far. That's great. We Thanks, also, Nicola. I do, go on. We, we also have a question in from Michael. Is being proactive not being old fashioned? So should we not be doing everything online now? Um, <clears throat> Nicola, that is one of my favorite questions. Because uh, there'll be loads of people who are listening in today will have started off their career at about the same time as me, or maybe even before that. And as you'll be aware, there was no online channels at that time. It was very much all about relationship building and being proactive. And with the arrival of digital, you know, at one point, people thought that the whole world would go digital and then other channels, there would be no place for that. But actually, that's not how it's evolved. It's very much about building offline and online sales channels. And I would urge you not to forget the talent of simply being proactive, reaching out, finding leads, creating relationships in your local community and throughout Ireland, because that input will achieve the really, really big outcome of revenue generation. So please do not forget that. Is that okay, Nicola? Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. And we actually have the results of the poll in. So 44% of those with us today are pro proactive about creative, creating bookings and revenue generation using local partnerships. And that means that 56% haven't quite done it yet, but maybe today will inspire them to do so. Oh gosh, and I would say, Nicola, that's such an insightful feedback because it is literally, and I've told you, I've you know built commercial strategies for lots of different accommodation providers and destinations, and it's always of great interest to me that when we start to do these, people think about the most complex, the most expensive solutions, whereas actually step one is you start in your local community and you build out the partnerships there. So let's hopefully we could correct if we were to run that poll next week or over the coming months, we could correct those percentages uh, because uh, that that you know that will generate really real business for you in 2021. So it's very interesting insight there. Okay, we're going to keep going then, moving through the content. Um, and you know, I'm delighted with Nicola popping in with the questions there. So if you have questions, make sure and put them in the chat box, and we'll address them also at the end of the, of today's session. So I do need to highlight, of course, the COVID-19 safety charter. It comes across very strongly in Falta Ireland's consumer insight that, that our customers, and of course we will understand that, are looking to be reassured. Um, if the re reassurance is not visible and in place, the customer immediately notices, and that causes anxiety. Now we are hospitality and tourism business providers. Our role is to delight. Our role is not to cause anxiety. So I would urge you to make sure that your COVID-19 policies are uh, clear to the customer. And of course, the COVID-19 safety charter is just perfect to display offline and online because it is a label that basically tells the customer that you know how to look after their needs and it needs very little communication beyond that. So I would urge you with this charter, if you have it, to display it online and online so we can, the customer can just immediately feel reassured, get on with establishing that you're a match for their needs and then move forward to making that all important booking and getting the cash tills ringing for your business this year which is really important. For those of you who would like to have more information on the COVID-19 safety charter the link is here at the bottom of the screen and I would urge you to explore that later. Okay this topic is really close to my heart emphasizing value and the management of pricing for customers because I've definitely seen in accommodation providers and lots of tourism businesses in Ireland that we often call a, a price without emphasizing the value and the price point and that if it's not if you know if it's not done clearly can make our businesses seem expensive so that is something I would very much like to see you uh, all of us correcting this year so in that regard I'm just going to call up this article that was done by Polo Canila in February of this year and and I'm not going to read it in detail, it's quite long, but the link for that article is on the slide here. 
and it's it's really really insightful and it's really addressing uh the perception of value uh, among do domestic markets um and and i would urge you to read the article but even more importantly i would urge you to take a look at the social media uh input that followed the article and quite a lot of people from ireland uh you know expressing that they have realized that there's really great value to be had here so there's one key thing i'd like to say here we are the tourism and hospitality businesses it is our job job to communicate the value. It is not the job of the customer <clears throat> to go searching for it. So it needs to be really clear at the point of purchase when the customer is exploring and it needs to be really clear at the point of experience. So the Fall to Ireland Consumer Insights very clearly calls out that people want bang for their buck. They want to know they'll have a good time without feeling ripped off and I think we could all identify with that. Paul O'Connell made this really important statement in that article. He said, simply highlighting the price means nothing. It's like saying a 50,000 euro car is expensive without describing the car. And there lie, therein lies in the argument between price and value. So what is value? Value is the correlation between product and price. So that means we need the value, the price inclusions to be understood. And as I said to you there, it's our job to inform the customer nicely with professional friendly language so that they understand the value within the price points. <clears throat> So I'm just going to call out this example here. This is Perryville House in Kinsale. It's an award winning guest house. And when you take a look through their communications, you can see value written all over it. For example, there's lots of references to the breakfast. Our breakfast is an event, an occasion. We offer exceptional choice for all tastes and requirements. And so there's really lovely touches about the breakfast being an event in this particular guest house. And notice how they've also put in little communications, drip feeding, I call that drip feeding the communications visually, verbally through text, so that the customers can identify that they're a match for this particular accommodation offering. So look at this one for the golf lover. You'd be delighted to know the world famous old head of Kinsale Golf Links is nearby, described by Tiger Woods as one of the most spectacular sites I have ever seen in golf. So very succinct communications, enabling that customer to see that they're a match there. And you can take a look at this uh, later. When you go into the bedrooms in this particular guest house, you will see that the inclusions are really clear and there are lovely touches like, you know, uh, in you know this room, the superior room, enhanced by charming courtyard garden views, um, luxury lin linens, period furnishings. But it's not overdone. It's not a Bible of content. It's really succinct content that the customer can read quickly and in their head mentally they're assessing without even being aware of it. Oh, this is a match for what I need here. And that's exactly what we want. So let's take a look now at managing pricing and terms and conditions for customers. So we, of course, as accommodation providers, it is our job to establish the rates that we want to sell to customers. So we are seeing, and again, it is the job of the accommodation provider to see this, to decide this, customers looking uh, for more flexibility in light of the uncertain world that we're living in. So you have the option to create, say, flexible rates where you can book now and some com accommodation providers are maybe not requesting a, a deposit and offering flexible cancellation. They decide what the cancellation policy is up until say whatever that is, 24, 48, 72 hours, seven days out, you know, 14 days out, whatever that is before arrival. Pre-purchase rates are really interesting. So you can put a rate out and book now and you might receive a really good discount. It's an incentive to book, but maybe you're going to advise that this is a prepaid, non-refundable rate. So that can be a really interesting way of driving bookings. Uh, and I would consider, I would urge you to consider that tactic, maybe also for driving bookings, thinking ahead now into the low and shoulder seasons, moving into October, right through to December and into the first quarter of 2022. So displaying rates that might already start getting revenue on the books for those periods. We're definitely noticing an accommodation provider's incentives for staying longer and isn't that what we want people to stay longer and many accommodation providers are incentivizing with discounts. So this is an example and I love the communications. Remember our customers reading our communications are unlikely to come from the world of hospitality and tourism so they don't understand the backroom language that we use. So when we present our communications to those customers we need to present it in language that means something to them and I love this one. Just one more night, stay another night or two or more and we'll give you 15% off. This is the accommodation provider. And I love it. Go on, just one more night. Again, a customer not from hospitality or tourism would find that really inviting. 
A lot of accommodation providers putting strategies in place to sell that every last bed or space or site with special discounts or perks for last minute bookings. And that's what we're looking to do, maximize the opportunity for 2021. So doing an input that achieves the outcome of maximizing revenue generation. So, of course, when we look at our pricing, we also need to be clear on our uh, cancellation policies. Um, and we can offer cancellation policies that give flexibility or that request, say, full or partial prepayments. I would urge you, and you know, uh, a number of you said that you do have, um, uh, you have gone after the domestic market in recent years. So hopefully those who said yes to that, you also have a loyal and regular customer base to look after. And there's a real desire during these times to be kind to customers who've been kind to us in the past and who come back and visit again. So enabling them you know, to win eternal goodwill. And I do need to call out that I know for my own family, there's a place that we regularly stay in. And I called to make a reservation this year and they asked absolutely lovely receptionist said to me, Julia, I can say you've stayed with us an awful lot. I'll tell you what, you can pay when you arrive. And I will never forget her saying that. We're so going to turn up and we will be paying. But it's just that thought that she acknowledged that we were regular customers in that place that really meant a lot. And I'll never forget her saying it, particularly in light of these kind of times that we're living through where those kindnesses mean even more. So what I would say when you're presenting your communications, bearing in mind that the customer is not from the world of hospitality and tourism often, that there also needs to be humanity in the presentation of our policies. Now, before I bring this to your attention, I do want to highlight that the purpose of this example is simply to highlight communications regarding cancellation policies. You very much must define your own cancellation terms and maybe you want to seek advice in that regard. So I'm just calling this out as an example of a policy uh, where you see real humanity in the language. So look at how it begins, we understand that you may be concerned given the rapidly changing information on travel restrictions and cancelled or postponed public events. In light of these unchartered times, they're offering free cancellation up until 3 p.m. But notice that they also have non-prepaid bookings and that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, sorry, that 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 uh, advantage is not extended to prepaid booking. So they have different pricing strategies there. They're offering this uh, you know, to a particular rate type. And I love the last point that they put into their cancellation policies. Not ready to book just yet. You can see I've highlighted there. Just leave us your email address and we'll send you a link or a communication where you can pick up whenever you are ready. A human being wrote that policy and the human being reading it feels it. So remember through our communications, we are in the business of hospitality and tourism, we need to make that customer feel welcomed. Human beings communicating together. We are in the jobs, uh, in the roles of creating memories and making sure that they are cared for. So I would urge you maybe to take a look at your cancellation policies and the presentation of your rates in that regard, deciding those policies and the presentation of rates uh, according to the model that best suits your business. OK, we're moving on really nicely now, and I'm going to take you into tips to drive 2021 sales. So we're going to look at, you know, multiple ways to grow. There, Sorry, there are multiple ways to grow revenue generation, and I'm going to touch on those. But like I said there earlier, there can be desire to go for the most complex and the most expensive first, whereas that's not what we do. We go right back to step one, and we focus on no and low cost solutions, making small physical changes that attract customers that are a match for our accommodation. So the tools for revenue generation for tourism businesses for accommodation providers are very simply these. So sales and going back to Nicola's question there earlier, uh, being proactive and reactive. So proactive, identifying a lead, you know, a calling that lead and bringing that lead to conversion. In other words, achieving a booking uh, through the lead that you've called. Reactive, when the inquiry comes in, that you are efficient. Think about the, the example I used from the B&B lady earlier. I'm swift, I'm thorough, I'm kind in my reply because my aim is to bring the booking to conversion. So reactively, I need to be strong as well. Marketing offline, maybe through referrals online, through my website, both important coexisting, cohabiting together, and CRM or database management, very important for revenue generation. And I'll go into that in a little bit more detail shortly. Before we start, and we did say we focus on low and no cost solutions first. So I will urge you after today's session to take a look at this link. Um, uh, where you can address uh, your fall to Ireland listing, which of course is displayed on the Discover Ireland website. So put this one in bright lights. I want you to take a look at this listing after today's session. 
The Discover Ireland website, you will see on the menu here on the top right that we displayed with the arrow. When you drop in there, you see all the different uh, uh, categories of accommodation providers, bed and breakfast, hotel, guest house, camping, historic house, glamping, and on we go, all of you represented on the session here today. So why is it so important this year to make sure that your listing is 100% in order? Well, as you will be aware, uh, I hope you are aware, Falls to Ireland are uh, heavily investing in the hashtag Keep Discovering campaign. So it's very important for you to know how to muscle in behind that campaign, creating opportunities for your business community and destinations. So. The uh, customers from uh, the domestic market are going to be referred to the Discover Ireland website. So you don't want them landing on that website and finding your listing not in order. So if you do not have a listing, I'm urging you to create one. And if you do have a listing, I'm urging you to review it to make sure it's in order and that it speaks to the needs of your target customers and their interest needs and nuances for 2021, like we explained there earlier. I would urge you when you go into the listing, there's an option to put in your visit website and your book now links. Please make sure that they are directing the customers to the right places. I'm seeing book now links where customers cannot make a booking. I've noticed broken links and I'm noticing links that are bringing customers to a place where no inventory is loaded, loaded. So make sure that the book now functionality is bringing the customer to the place where they can actually book. So we want to make sure that this is in order. Think smart regarding the, the uh, text that you use in that listing so that your customers can quickly read through it and see that they are a match. Like we said there earlier, if you're pet friendly or family friendly accommodation, you could put in notes about golfers welcome or a bilingual Irish and English speaking team accommodation provider. So make it easy for the customer to see that you are their, their match so they can just get on and making the booking and you can get on with, you know, making money and looking after them. Um, I will highlight, in as we've just brought up the Keep Discovering campaign, uh, that there is a session that I would urge you to sign up for on Friday, the 21st of May. So I think that's already tomorrow. And that's on from 11 to 11.45. So Paul Keeley, of course, from the Fall to Ireland team and Niall Tracy, who's head of marketing, will be leading that session. And there's a summary of the content here, including the details of the campaign and the domestic sales opportunity. So I would urge you to put that date in your diary. I'll certainly be tuning in. I'm really looking forward to the outcome of that. So once uh, we've asked you to uh, update your Discover Ireland uh, content and listings, also, of course, make sure that all your other sales channels are in order as well, creating a positive impression that enables the customer to find your accommodation as their best match. So clearly make sure your website is in order. Look at the lovely communications there that the Morgan Hotel created around uh, pet owner um, matches and the lovely insights that we got from the uh, Perryville guest house there in, in Kinsale. So make sure that all of your content offline and online is speaking to the needs of the customer that you're aiming to win in 2021. And we would always say that, imagine a customer lands on a page and there are not images that actually meet their needs. They immediately feel confused and they may go away and search elsewhere. And that's not what we're looking for this year when we're trying to maximize revenue generation. I'm going to speak now about database management and uh, our regular customers because database management is often overlooked in revenue generation and honestly it is totally key. So we are focusing on, we know that you know, Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland visitors based on you know, the information we have at hand now are our key opportunities for 2021 and you know, um, thinking forward into quarter four 2022. So when we gather data about our domestic customers from these markets, we really should know their county location. So you should know, for example, the number of customers you have say from County Limerick or County Antrim or anywhere else. Uh, because if you create an input, you know, you go after customers in a particular destination, you should also be able to assess the outcome. So where did they come from if I went after it? And knowing where they came from is thereby important. You should know how they booked, for example, via offline or online sales channels. Did they book to your website or did you get that referral from a local cookery school? You should be recording that. So you see what kind of sales channels are delivering the revenue for you. And that's important, not just for assessing inputs and outcomes. So assessing what has come out of the work you've, you've done to win that customer, but it's also essential for future planning. So you can build out more opportunities um, in the markets and the counties that you've identified. So for all domestic customers, it would be lovely to think that you would have your house in order in that regard. 
Our repeat customers, I would think of differently. I think of those a bit like my family or my club. And for those customers, I need to have a little bit more detail. I'll take their county information too. I may also need their contact information, maybe something like an email if I communicate with them in that way. Maybe I'll want to specifically know their customer segment data, like are they an angler or something like that. And I definitely want them to know, uh, want to know how they have booked. So of course, we can only gather data from customers who want to be part of our family club based on them consciously opting in. That's a condition of GDPR compliance. But for those of customers who do consciously opt in, it would be lovely to have this data. And what you do then is create data that you can communicate with later. And we'll talk about that more again in a moment. So we're moving on now towards the last 15 minutes of today's session, and we'll be leaving uh, uh, some time at the end for questions. And I just want to bring you into specifically winning low and shoulder business season business. So we're going to think through October, December 2021 and January to February 2022. Uh, and I know there's a great, uh, you know, you could really, uh, really just focus on the upcoming months, but I want you to start thinking ahead as well. So let's look at that regard. So some tips for winning low and shoulder season business in 2021 and as we said quarter 2022 and for the rest of your strategies in developing revenue for your business for you know for the, the for any number of years into the future. So number 1 I want you to know that you are responsible for creating a compelling narrative. You are the one that creates the narrative that encourages the customer to travel year round, including low and uh, shoulder season. Your input achieves that outcome and you need to know that you have a responsibility and a control, which is nice to know in that regard. Number two, through your offline and online narrative and communications, it is you who must inspire the customer to come and stay. Number three, when we're building out business for future seasons, it is really important to look ahead. We never just look at what's right in front of us. We look ahead to build the opportunity. And number four, touching on the previous slides, we use data to generate uh, business year round, but particularly in low and shoulder season opportunities. So let's drill down that into a little bit more further now. Uh, and these are not accommodation provider businesses, but I really want to draw them to your attention. This is Wild Food Mary, who's based in County Offaly at the foot of the Sleeve Bloom Mountains. And you can read this in more detail later, but uh, Mary does not see the seasons as a barrier to engaging with her. In fact, what she does is she makes uh, her experience, which is about foraging in County Offling. She makes those seasons sing. She shows the customers the reasons to engage with her spring, summer, autumn and winter. She creates a narrative that is positive in that regard and the outcome is that the customers do engage. This is another example from the beautiful Mount Congreve Gardens in Waterford. And again, you know, making the season sing, spring, summer, autumn and winter. And the lovely outcome of activity like this, and we hear it again and again, is we show the customers what can be done across four seasons. We give them reasons to come once and we give them reasons to return during other periods of the year. So take your lead from these people who are doing great work in that regard and see how you can pull that into your accommodation provider um, narrative and communications. I am going to pull on this uh, 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 amazing business. I'm a very big fan. It's Glamping Under the Stars. And the links to the business are here on the bottom. So Glamping on the Stars are very good at maximizing their revenue sales. Also thinking, looking ahead into the future and even those last minute sales for availability in the upcoming days. So um, I will... You have the link to the website here and you also have the link to a, a newspaper article because the communications created by Glamping Under the Stars are really compelling and they really create a following uh, that's really kind and supportive in that regard. In fact, so kind and supportive that you might remember there was a time during the pandemic where County Leash in its own right was in lockdown when some most other counties were not. And imagine then Glamping Under the Stars lost a lot of bookings, but what happened? The local community came out and supported them and you know took the bookings from glamping under the stars and they had lovely stays that's an example of an input creating a following and outcome that is just so compelling i would urge you to take a look at that article in this example here Again, glamping on the stars, very good at creating reasons online and offline as to why you should visit County Leash. This is, for example, highlighting, um, you know, um, she, and they're always highlighting local places of interest, uh, visitor attractions and historic um, uh, attractions and heritage and landscapes. I love the one on the right, which you're going to see, and you can look in more detail there later, uh, more on the, the kind of black 
a black print there. But you'll see that they're saying, get to know the sleeve blooms. We attended a fall to Ireland uh, Zoom about the sleeve blooms. I'm so embarrassed to think I didn't show this place off to my previous customers. It's amazing. And ever since Glamping Under the Stars have been making the sleeve blooms uh, sing, you know, a really brilliant place for having adventures and exploration. So they are creating a narrative that encourages the customer to engage and to come back across diverse seasons. I think that's really, really compelling. Uh, this is another example. This is from uh, Don Cannon Holiday Park, so caravanning and camping. You won't see this here now, but I would urge you to go into the um, to the link in Facebook afterwards. It's a really lovely post. And this is actually a video of a goat moving along uh, Duncannon Fort in Wexford there. And you'll see a Duncannon Fort has some sure-footed visitors today. So just a little humor there. But again, highlighting those reasons to come and creating the sense of a personality, uh, not just in the high seasons, but year round. This one is really cute. Look at this. We had to get a digger today to clear the snow off the sand pit. So obviously a toy digger there and drawing attention to the winter season. And it got lovely engagement and fair play really inspiring the customer, creating human connections there. This is Rowan Tree Hostel down in Ennis. I'm a very big fan of this team and their communications, really rooting the hostel within the context of its destination. You can see lots of reasons to come to Ennis here. And again, through social media communications, highlighting here uh, Ennis Abbey at sunrise with a beautiful picture and doing this year round, promoting the destination 52 weeks of the year, not being negative, but being positive and proactive, creating that narrative that inspires the customer to get off their couch, out their front door, booking your accommodation and staying in your destination. So winning business in that regard is all about looking ahead. We look four quarters out, three quarters out, two quarters out. We look within the upcoming quarter. We maximize opportunities within the upcoming three months, two months, one month. And then we look closer within the upcoming month, weeks and days. So really smart thinking tourism businesses look ahead to win that opportunities. For example, I can see that there are tourism businesses and accommodation providers now that are creating strategies that can target their summer customer. For example, giving offers to those summer customers uh, that extend to those customers and their friends and family applying to the lower sh shoulder season months in 2021 and 2022. So already looking at getting business on the books. Input equals outcome. You do that. You're clever with that. You will achieve the revenue generation. So I'd ask you to think in that way. And finally, using data to win low shoulder uh, and shoulder season opportunities. Take care of your regular customers, the people I call my family or club. You can reach out if you've gathered the data there with inspirational reasons to engage and making sure that your, your destination and your offering sings in those low and shoulder seasons too. You could maybe extend the special offers for those period, but what you really need to do is plan the communications ideally now so that you can build the momentum to win those bookings. So by the time you arrive into quarter four, you are not trying to you know gather the revenue in the immediate period, but you already have revenue on the book because you've started the strategy earlier enough. So all the time thinking ahead is really important to building revenue generation. So we've been on a whirlwind here today, everyone, and I'm just going to summarize now with the ask post this session before I call on uh, um, Nicola from Fall to Ireland to check in to see if there are any further questions. So the ask, and I hope you haven't turned up today for a talking shop because that's what this is not about. It is about being proactive, positive and solution driven. So hopefully you're in front of maybe your computer taking notes. You've got a pen and paper hand. You're going to revisit these slides afterwards because this is what we're going to ask you to do. Number one. Review your accommodation business as it currently stands. Be clear, like the work we did there earlier, on what advantages your accommodation offers. Identify at least five. Review your accommodation facilities, being clearly identifying which customers are a match. Note minimum five selling points, minimum five, you might come up with 10 about your location. Note the amenities that are close to your accommodation, clearly identifying which ones are a match for your target customers. Number two, like we said earlier, be clear on the target customers that are a match for your accommodation. Take a look at those Fall to Ireland Consumer Insights and you'll be able to delve further into those. Be clear on the specific interests and needs and nuances of those target customers that your accommodation can address. Number three, informed by the above work, think through the communications for your accommodation imagery and text, verbal communication, defined what needs to be created, edited or updated. 
update your communications and content accordingly on all sales channels, including your own website and any other sales channels where your accommodation provider is represented. I am urging you to prioritize your Discover Ireland listing. Think smart, update your tests to ensure your target customers can easily find your accommodation offering as their match. Noting, like we said earlier, if you're pet friendly or golfers welcome and on you go. Number six, reassure customers, making sure that your COVID-19 safety charter is visible, that your policies are displayed offline and online, that there are customers are immediately reassured. Number seven, reach out and create referral opportunities in the local marketplace. I'm gonna urge you to think about five. Number eight, reach out and think about partnership opportunities you can create in the local mar marketplace or maybe throughout Ireland. Again, I'm gonna ask you to think about five. Identify be five best match lead opportunities. So think about it. I'm an uh, accommodation provider that suits anglers. Think about angler associations that you could reach out to. Be proactive, going back to Nicola's question earlier about winning business, you know, maybe identify five strong leads there. Put a system in place to gather GDPR compliant data, know your regular customers, treat them with care. They are your family and your club. And please, please plan your strategy for building low, medium season opportunities as early as possible to maximize 2021 bookings, 2022 booking opportunities, ensuring that you've got strategies in place to communicate off season offers and reasons to travel to your accommodation and destination um, uh, this year. And after that whirlwind, I'm going to bring you uh, back now and Nicola will join us for the question and answer session. Um, I'm going to very quickly, as I'm waiting for Nicola to join, just uh, uh, make you aware, like I said there earlier, uh, while I would love you to take a look at Falter Ireland's consumer insights and details through the link that we shared with you there earlier, there are some summary insights at the end of this session, uh, which you can explore in your own time. So back to Nicola now, and um, hopefully there are some questions, Nicola. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Julie. I think we've um, provided people with a huge amount of information to mull over afterwards. Um, we've had a lot of questions. So given the time constraints, we're just going to focus on questions related to driving domestic sales, because as we said earlier, and as you know, at this stage, that's the theme of today's website. Just a couple of general points to address first. Um, some people had queries about updating their contact information. You can either do that in the trade portal or through the customer support team and that's on 1 800 24 24 73. We had some people asking how to register for the webinar on the Keep Discovering campaign. So we're going to put that link into the chat. And if you're interested, just click on the link. As, as Julie said, it's taking place tomorrow morning. So if you're interested, I'd suggest before you even step up from your, your computer to just register there straight away. Julie, we had a market insight from Niall and Claire. He's telling me that up to 2019, the market that they had for their accommodation business was 100% international. But for 2020 and 2021, their luxury private lodges sold out. So from that, he's deducing that price isn't an issue. However, individual room sales are very slow. It's the same quality, it's the same location, it's probably a better service, and it's a lower per, per person rate. So what he's taking from that is the market seems to want more self-catering at the moment. Uh, well, funny, for my own family, I've actually booked uh, um, more of a, a not self-catering because in my house, people wanted to have their breakfast served up to them every day. So I would say in the communications, um, look, um, for that bedroom in the uh, hotel or the guest house, it's very important that in the communications that the customer can see that uh, they can be reassured. So I'd say firstly, the communications need to state that. And if it were me, I'd be creating uh, communications about all of the advantages of staying um, um, in the in the main accommodation provider in the bedroom. I again would do the bullet point about that and communicate it to the customer. And I would start creating that communication offline and online. Uh, because it is incredible to see how clearly the customer takes our lead. So we always need to understand that we are in charge of the communication and the narrative. We are the ones charged with inspiring the customer. So I would say in light of the current times we're living in, um, people can see easily that self-catering is maybe a match for their needs, but it's about showing us that there are other options that are a match for their needs too, and we need to create that narrative. That's very, very true, Julie. And one of our attendees comments, they had strong revenue pre-COVID, but they don't know where it came from and how to replicate it. Have you any suggestions? Okay. 
Yeah, well, actually, Nicola, that one actually makes me, you know, um, I, I, I would feel almost a bit sad when I hear that because um, data collection is the key to that. We need to know what sales channels our customers came from. We need to know what markets, whether that market is the domestic or when we were dealing and when the internationals return again, what markets they come from. I consider that the Lego blocks of revenue generation and people only seem to realize it's an issue when the revenue stops. But, you, you know, without knowing where the revenue came from in the first place, what markets, what customer segments, what what sales channels, we've literally nothing to work upon. So I would say this, if you have not collated data in that regard in the past, you can do very little about that, but to start correcting that for the future. So what I often find when I'm working with accommodation providers is they don't record the data in one house. In other words, that I can go to one place and see the data for all offline and online channels, all markets from the domestic or whether that's international as well. What you find is when you turn up an accommodation provider is if they do not have that in order, and that's more the, um, that's more the norm. Uh, than the exception so that's something we need to correct and often the accommodation provider might be bringing you to another channel like maybe an online travel agent to get some sense of the kind of customers who are coming to the business but that online travel agent may only be delivering a certain percentage of the business so it is the job of the accommodation provider whatever kind of accommodation provider you are to create a house where all your data is located so to be working towards that is important that's a big issue Nicola I'm glad that was called out mm -hmm. Well, look, we've hit the 11.15 mark, and I'm conscious that everybody's busy at the moment getting ready to reopen. So I think we'll, we'll call it a day there. Um, I hope we've inspired you to new ways of driving domestic sales in 2021 and for the sh shoulder seasons also. So, Julie, many thanks for facilitating the session, and thank you for your expertise and top tips, which I hope everyone found useful. The whole premise of today's session was to help get an overview of the different types of domestic consumer that are priority targets for 2021, and to be able to analyze the requirements of different types of guests. To know how to play to the, your strengths and how to position your accommodation business to suit the needs of the domestic visitor. To learn how to untap other potential guests by considering small changes you could make in your business to make it more attractive to those looking for specific pro product types so as Julie discussed, pet friendly, golf, local food, etc., and to optimize increased sales with top tips to market and sell to existing and new businesses, both in high season and also more importantly in the shoulder season. And I hope you now have the information and the tools to be able to do that. Many thanks to you all for tuning in, tuning in. And as I said, we'll publish the webinar and the slides on the Fulcher Ireland website, and we'll send you a link if you want to view it again or if you want to recommend it to others. So that just leaves me on behalf of Fulcher Ireland to say thanks again and have a good day. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone.